Today we are um, continuing on 2.1 and 2.2 notes. Um, I quickly, um, this is a really bad line, but this is what you guys should have down from yesterday. I just quickly did it so it looks really ugly. So, now that you know um, the graph we're looking at, because you should all have it from yesterday, um, let's go on to answer these questions about our graph. It says, how can this graph be used to find the length of the race? The length. What's the length, Lily, really represent here? This is time on our x-axis and what on our y-axis? The distance. So really, what does it mean by length when we say that? The distance. So how far between the two, um, who is it? Emily and Henry? Um, Emil, is that how you say it? Okay, Emil. And Henry, um, how can you determine that, Lily? Um, you could see, one, you could see how far each of the, the little lines go, but then see, like, how far first. How far I can follow my line up. So on this ugly graph that I did a very poor job of doing, um, how far up should I go? To, like, where the end of the line is at. So how do, I, how do I know where to end the lines, though? I can go to... 100, 120 for my distance, I can keep going. When do I know when to stop? Well, when it's like a reasonable distance. A reasonable distance? Okay. Sophia? Where they meet? What do you mean by meet? You're on the right track there? Key, key, key word. Where they intercept. When they intercept, that's when the boys will tie the race. So, when we go down here, it says the points... where the two lines intercept intercept shows the points the points at which the boys tie and that interception, Sophia, happens to be at what point? It's kind of hard to see it on mine. I'm sorry. 75. Okay, that's one of my interceptions, but what about the rest of it? That's just giving me my y-axis. 30. Perfect. You okay? So I can write it in coordinates like 30, 75. Which also means my 30 is my time, so it took them 30 seconds. Or I can say 75, um, what is this, meters? 75. You see how I'm able to give either the time or the distance, whatever they want me to find? If we go on, I can write an equation out. It says write an equation representing the relationship between the time and the distance. Henry's equation. I'll tell you that we're doing d equals what? How am I going to determine my distance based on the patterns? And on that front page, you guys created a table yesterday. Using my table and using the information I know, can I figure out um, what kind of equation I should have here? Zane. One T. Okay, we're going to use our T for our time. I don't know if it's exactly one, though. Does anyone else want to try? Let's see. Becky? Yeah, that's what this equation is. You're right. You're exactly right. It's Y equals MX plus B. So in this case, I'm rewriting it because I don't really need a Y. What's Y represent in our graph? Well, that's our D, our distance. So that's why I have D here. Um, we can look. Where does it intercept at? Let me move this up. Here is Henry. Where is my Y axis? Where does it intercept across the Y axis? At what number? Robert. My y? 
Where does it cross my y-axis? 45. 45. Thank you. No, yeah. Yep, where it crosses that y line is my b. So I know I'm going to have 45 here. Plus, I need to figure out my mx, like Becky said. It's going to be mx, but we're looking at time, so it's not going to be x, it's going to be a t. Well, when we go back up here, every one, um, the time, what is this, in hours? Oh, seconds. So every one second, it goes up by one. So this is really just t. T plus 45. That is in that same equation I wrote in here in green. I just took a D and T instead of a Y and an X. So with your shoulder partners, or if you're a table of three, with your table, try to figure out um, the next equation. D equals what, based on the patterns we use? I'll give you about two minutes to do that. Hey, let's come back together. Eyes are up here. What did you find for the equation, Anthony Marisi? D equals what for a meal? 2.5 T. And how did you find that? Yeah, he walks 2.5 meters per second. So, I mean, if you really want, we could look to see where the y-intercept is, and it is at 0, 0. So you don't even have to add that. So all you would have to do is your mx, which is our 2.5 times t. 2.5 T. Perfect. So let's um, say what this stuff represents. What's our D represent? Distance in what? Okay. And then my T. Time in? In seconds. Awesome. How does the walking rate of each brother show up in the table, graph, and the equation? The walking rate, that's that constant that we always look at. How does that show up in a table? When we look at a table on the front page, oh, Aiden, when I look at that table on that front page that we created, how can I determine the walking rate? In the table as what? I'm sorry? It's the constant rate of change. Okay. As the constant rate of change. And we're looking at in distance. For each second. God bless you. Perfect. Thank you, Aiden. So we're looking at that constant rate. What's that pattern? How is it going up by? If we go on to our graph, how is the walking rate shown in a graph? The walking rate. Eliana. Yeah, we know it's going to be a linear line. Um, how it's going to be straight, yes, because that goes along with being a linear line. But we can determine the walking rate. Um, let's look at Emil and Henry's alone in our graph. Is one more steep than the other? Yeah, so we can determine someone's walking rate by how steep that line is. So we can look. Um, the walking rate shows up as the steepness. of the line. We look at how steep that line's going up by. And then in the equation, the last part, how can I determine um, Mason the equation? Okay, so what is really the walking rate? Um, how is it represented in the equation? I guess we could start with that. What variable really is it? M. Okay, my slope. So M, we call M, since it's a number in front of the X, we call it the coefficient. 
So it's ex you're right. It's the um, so it's the it's um, the walking rate is the coefficient. It's the coefficient of t, and in parentheses we can put the number multiplied by t. And then we can also write, Mason, because you told me it's the number in the M spot. And that M spot that we're talking about is when we're looking at an equation that's Y equals MX plus B. That's my M spot. That's my coefficient, which is also my walking rate. That's where it's always expressed. Um, if we get through this today, I'm going to try to give you it at the end of the hour. Okay. I'll give you about 30 seconds to finish writing this down. On part B, it says, how far does a meal walk in 20 seconds? Mason, do you have a question? You have the answer? Okay. Let's hold on. I'll give you about a minute. Using that equation that we just created together, now we can determine how far a meal walks when they tell us, hey, he walks for 20 seconds. What's his distance for 20 seconds? We don't know. We can look at our table. We can look at our graph. Or we can plug it into our equation. We can do all of the above now that we know all of it. So I'll give you about a minute to um, solve that, work with some shoulder partners. So let's come back together. Let's come back together. Eyes are up here. Peyton, did you, um, can you tell me what you did to solve this? How far does Emil walk in 20 seconds? What did you do? Okay, you looked at the graph. Okay, so you looked at the graph and went across to 20 seconds in our graph, and then you took the line up to determine where it was in our y-axis, because our y-axis was our distance. You can do that. What did you get? I'm sorry? You got 50 meters. Perfect. Okay. Hand down on your head if you got that. Perfect. Lily, did you do it a different way? Yeah. What did you do? I looked on like, the first page and I looked on the table. Okay, so you looked at the table. You kind of like glanced at where it was 20 seconds on the table and went yeah. across. Okay, perfect. There's another way. Let's use that equation. What's my equation? We had D equals 2.5T. Oops. Let's fix that. D equals 2.5T. Well, I know my seconds, so why don't I just plug it in for my seconds? Mason. Is that what you did, Mason? Yes. Oops, this should be a 20. Okay, so 2.5 times 20, which gives me 50. Blake? Oh, I did write an 8. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. There it is. 2.5 times 20. And when you multiply that together, that would give you your 50 meters. So then it says, after 20 seconds, how far apart are the brothers? Like, they're 15 meters apart. 15 meters apart. Awesome. How did you find that, Blake? Well, since Emil has a 45 meter head start, it's Okay. Yeah, you can subtract 50 from 65. Exactly. So you use more of the calculations. That's awesome. What you can do, too, is let's look at our graph, too. I'm showing it different ways. You can use the calculations um, to realize that he starts at 45 meters for Henry, and then add 20 to that to give you your 65. Also, if you look at the graph, Emil, when he is at, what is it, 20 seconds? Emil is at... 50. I look at my y-axis at my 50, kind of how Peyton did, and I went up and saw where it crossed the axis at, and I saw that that was at 50 meters. So if I do the same thing for Henry, Henry is at 
65 when I do that same thing. So then like Blake said, I can take the difference. Well, to find the difference of these, I'm going to simply subtract. Okay, 65 minus 50 gives me my 15 meters apart. That's how I can determine how far apart they are from one another. It says, how long is the distance represented in the table? How is the distance represented in the table? How is the distance represented? Lily. In the table, it has like the seconds and then mm -hmm. just like go over and see like how the yellow's distance and mm -hmm. the blue's distance. Okay. Yeah. So if I were to, um, we didn't express this. Yeah, we did the equation, the calculations like Blake did. And then I showed um, the graph. We can use the table, because on the table, like Lily said, you can take the distance at 20 seconds. We go to our table on that x-axis. Where is it at 20 seconds? OK, once you find that, you can go across to a meal's time, and you can go across to Henry's time. Once it states, because we made those calculations that Henry is at 65 and Emil is at 50, just by looking at our table because we stated that, then you can subtract the two distances. So this is just showing us different ways to solve question two. That's solving it using the table. You find your 20 seconds, you find what point, what, how many meters they are, and then subtract that number, just like we were doing. And then again, um, we went over this already. I explained it, but let's write it out um, for the graph. How can I determine this for the graph? Well, we said that you can look at the point when the graph is at 20y. What I mean by 20y is when the x-axis is at a 20, we have to follow that line up to determine what the point is on the y-axis. We're going to do this for each brother. And then again, once you determine the y's for both brothers, you can subtract the two points. So one is going to look like 2065, and the other one is going to be 2050. So there's our distances. So again, we're going to take the distance here and here and subtract them from one another to again get our 50 meters. So there's so many ways to do this stuff. We can always do it by an equation. We can always do it by the table like above in green, and we can always do it like a graph in blue. So if we go on to three, Blake, do you have a question? No? OK. So if we go on to three, it says, is the point 26, 70 on either graph? I'll let you answer this in a minute, Blake. I'm going to let um, you guys talk with your shoulder partners for about a minute. Determine, do you think this is a point on the graph? Yes or no, and why do you think that? I'll give you about a minute to talk it over. Eyes are up here. Blake, do you want to share with us what you think for question three? Yeah. Exactly. So looking at that graph, thank you. Awesome. We want to look at the points for both lines. Well, 26 is our x axis when they gave us this, and 70 is our y. So we want to look at that point on our graph. We can even highlight it on the graph. Put a dot there. Do either, does either line go through it? So like Blake was saying, no. 
because, um, like he did it with our equations, you can um, substitute 26 in 4t in Henry's equation. Henry's equation. And when you do that, you get 71 for D, for the distance. You get 71. Well, we don't want 71. We want it to be 70. And then if you do the same thing, the same thing, for a meal, if we plug our, um, what is it, 26 into our equation, you'll get 65. And is that 70? No. So you can determine that like Blake did by plugging it into your equation. Well, does your D equal that? Yes. That okay? Then yes, it is. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. Aiden? It doesn't ask why here, but on like a quiz or test, we'll specify if you have to explain it or not. I just wanted to for our notes today. Blake? Uh -huh. Oh, you looked at your graph? You looked at the points and followed it up? You can do that, but like my ugly graph that I just drew, it'd be pretty hard to determine that on the graph I did because I did it really fast. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I did it really fast though, so it was kind of hard on my graph to do. Sometimes graphs aren't as accurate. In this case, mine's clearly not going to be. Um, just so we can get our notes started. So I tried to rush through it. I should have though, because now I, since I rushed through it, my points are not accurate. Let's go on to four. It says, when Emil over, when will Emil overtake Henry? And explain how you know this. I'm going to call, let's see, Robert. First, let's answer, when will Emil overtake Henry? So you can do that by looking at your table. You can do that by looking at your graph. What does it mean by overtake? Pass him. So to, um, yeah, exactly. To pass him. So what did you say? Okay, so after 30 seconds. And what is it in distance? So we can determine it in both. If it's 30 seconds, what else is it? What did you say? Oh, yeah, 75. 30 seconds or 75 meters is when a meal will overtake. I should write overpass. Will overpass Henry. That's when he will um, pass Henry up, either 30 seconds or 75. It's the same thing. Mason? Guys, we have to stay quiet, and we should only be listening to Mason right now. Yeah, so you looked at their walking rates, and you saw that... Um, Emil's walking rate was faster, so he's going to pass him up faster than Henry ever will. So you determined it off of that? Yeah, that's a way to do that. Like I said before, using the graph, the table, the equations, there's so many different ways to answer all of these questions. We just came up with two ways. Um, if we go on to part three, it says, how can you determine which of the, of the two lines will be steeper? When we look at the table, how can we determine that? Talk with your shoulder partners for two minutes to look at the um, table and for question two down here, looking at the equation. How can you determine when it will be steeper? Two minutes. Let's come back together. Eyes are up here. Conversations are off now. Rebecca, can you help me with 1A for part C? How can you determine which of the two lines will be steeper just by looking at the table? How can I determine that? If 
they have a, I'm sorry, say that again, I just didn't hear you. A larger walking rate? Yes, what's that walking rate also um, represent? What's another way we can um, describe it as? Peyton, do you want to help her out? The constant rate, the walking rate is our constant rate. So exactly, in the table, if the constant rate of change, and I can put in parentheses, which is the walking rate in this case, is greater then the line will be steeper. And then again, we can write this info that if the rate is a negative, then it has a greater greater absolute value. If we go on to our equation, how can I determine which one is going to be um, steeper? Just by looking at the equation, Angela. If I look at the two equations that we created, d equals t plus 45 and d equals 2.5t, I'm looking at those two equations that we made on the second page. How can I determine which one's going to be steeper just by looking at that? The number? What do you mean by the number? What's the number represent? Two point five. Okay, so that two point five. Um, I think I was Mason. You were sharing this with us. What's that two point five really represent? What is that? It's the m and our y equals mx plus b form, and that two point five is also our walking rate, which is also our constant rate. So in this equation, um, sorry, it should be in in an equation. If the coefficient which is um, that m in our equations, if the coefficient of t which is a independent variable we're going to look at that. So if that independent variable is greater the line is steeper. So looking at those two independent variables, we have d equals t plus 45, and then d equals 2.5 times t. Mason? Uh, so, minus mm -hmm. is like slope or coefficient. So the m is yep. 2.5. Henry? T is 1. Right. So which one's steeper? Emil's. Emil's is steeper because you're just looking at that M. So like Mason said, 2.5 T, that's really like our MX. So that's our M. And then he saw that in Henry's, it's just T, which really means it's like 1 T. We don't always write that 1, though. So comparing 2.5 from 1, whatever number is greater, that line, that equation, when you um, plot those points on a graph, that is going to have a steeper line. So if we go on to part D, it says, at what points do Emil and Henry's graph cross the y-axis? So we're going to go back to our graph that we created at the top of page 2, and we want to find coordinates. We're going to write it as a coordinate. That means our coordinates look like this, x, y. 
And in this case, we want to know when it crosses the y-axis. So when it crosses the y-axis, what is that number, Sophia, for our x-axis always going to be? When we're looking at a y-axis, that means when it crosses that y-axis, that, that line, what is our x always? Let me go back to my ugly graph that I made. Um, I think it's two pages back. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Another one. Here it is. So here's my y-axis. This line that I just traced. Right there. There's my y-axis. And I said when this red line crosses it and when this blue line crosses it, that's my y-axis. What happens to my x always? Here's my x down here. So what is my x always going to be? X is always going to be 0 because this is 0 here. So if I go back, let's go back, let's see. Doo, doo, doo. I went too far now. Okay, so my x is always going to be 0. So we can plug that in. 0 y. So this is going to be 0 something. And this is going to be 0 something. So now I'm going to go back a page. Let's determine what our y is. Because they said, when does it cross that y axis? If I go back to my graph, when does Emil cross the y axis? Or Henry, I'm sorry, let's start with Henry, my red line. Here's my red line. When does it cross the y axis? At what point, Lily? 45. I'm sorry? 45. 45. Okay, awesome. I'll write it in in a minute. And then, Brayden, when does it cross my um, y axis for a meal? Zero. zero. It's going right through the corn at zero, zero. So, the way we would write this, Lily, you told me Henry is 45. And then, Brayden, you told me zero. So, it's just zero, comma, zero, and zero, comma, 45. That's when it crosses my y axis. So if we go on to that back page, it says for two, what information do these points represent in terms of the rays? In terms of the rays, those are the points we know. What, why are those two points that we just stated really important to them? Eliana, why are those two points really important? Zero, zero, and zero, 45. Do you want to phone a friend? Ava, do you want to help her? Yes. Exactly. At the start of the race, a meal is at zero meters. And Henry... Henry is at 45 meters. And key, I'm going to put right here, this is their starting mark. That is where they started their race. How can um, these points be found in a table? In a table, on my first page that we... Um, the very front page of our notes. Let's see. Ashley, how can I determine that in a table? Those two points, 0, 0 and 0, 45, how can I find those in my table? What's my 0 represent in those coordinates, 0, 0 and 0, 45? That's my x-axis, isn't it? And what did we say our x-axis represents? Does it represent distance or the time? The time. So how can I determine those looking at the table? If I want to know zero seconds, well, what do I have to do at my table? So I want to know when x is zero, which means when seconds is zero. 
How can I determine that looking at my table? The very first column, when this is time, seconds, zero in our table, can't I go across to Henry and Emil's t distance and see where they're at at that point? I can just trace it across. So I could find, let's say you can find these points on the table when time is at zero seconds. It's going to be at zero seconds because they told me it's going to be at zero seconds. So if I go back to my very first page with my table, And I plug my points in because we did this yesterday, so I don't have them still. 45, 55, 65, 75. Oh, I see. Okay, 65, 75, 85. Thank you. 25, 50, 75. I don't even need those. So, actually, like I was saying, this is my x in the graph. We said it was time. My distance, which is both of these, is my y. So if they told me, hey, find the, um, what was the question? When the graph is at the y-axis, we know that that means our x is 0. So here's my x being 0. To find the distance that Henry and Emil are at, I look at my 0 and just look to the right. Okay, well, where are they at? They're at 45 and they're at 0, right? We just follow it across once we figure out the points or the times that they're at. So if we go on to our question three, it says, how can you find these points? Oh, we did that one. Um, how can these points be found in an equation? Our last one. How can they be found in an equation? Oh, no. Mm-hmm. How can I determine that? They gave me my seconds. They said I'm at zero seconds. Okay. So those are the equations. But how can I determine their y-axis, which is their distance? Because that's really what we're doing here. So I can do that. All in all, you're on the right track. What is my time? What did they say it was? But what's my x-axis? They told me my x is 0, right? Yeah. And I want to find my y-axis. My y -axis. So that's when x is 0. And Ashley told me our x-axis represents what? Time or distance? Look at your x-axis, that line on the bottom. What does that represent, time or distance? It's okay. Right here, your graph. I'm sorry, did I say table? Yeah. Okay, when you're looking at your graph, mm -hmm. is that distance or time on the bottom? That's time. And that's what we want to be zero. So if I plug in zero for my time, which is 45, you're right, I get 45. I'm sorry, I meant to say graph, not table. So then same thing over here, 2.5. My time, which we know is going to be 0, 2.5 times 0 is what? 0, which is what my distance is. So for this explanation, in the equation, when t equals 0, when we plug 0 in for t, you will find the starting point. So basically today in our notes, we used the table that we created yesterday, we used that graph that we created yesterday, and we took the equation that we created today to determine different parts of, of um, their race, where they started it, 
when they um, pass each other up, things like that. So, in your summary for things to know, the intersection points represent the time in the race where the brothers will be at the same distance. That's your intersection. And it also shows, you can look at the graph by looking at when the line is, which line is steeper. And in our table, if, um, in the table, if the absolute value of the rate of the change is greater. That doesn't, that's written wrong. If the absolute value line is your rate of change is greater, you know in your table which one's going to be steeper. And then again in our equation, if the coefficient, which is the independent variable, is greater, then we know looking at our equation, which one is going to be steeper, looking at which number is greater. And I think, yep, that's it, those. Sorry? So, um, that's it for notes today. We will finish this. Finish this.